Hi. If you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I built a mini NES using a Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm currently developing a DIY kit for people to build their own, but progress has been slow this week as I've been waiting for my sample PCBs to arrive. Well, they turned up today, so I'll be able to test them out tonight and move forward with it this week. So, for those that have pre-ordered a kit, look out for another video with more details in the next few days. In the meantime though, I worked on a little side project I'll show you now. And this is it. So it's a Minia NES. It uses the Raspberry Pi Zero, which you can see here is quite a bit smaller than the regular Raspberry Pi boards. Um, it has a cut down version of my NFC controller and works in mostly the same way as my other Mini NES. It's not finished yet, uh, it's nowhere near as polished as the other system, but there is a link in the description to download the 3D files if you want to test it out. This will only be a side project for now, I won't be developing it anymore until the original Mini NES guides are finished and the kits are shipped. I'll quickly show you its features. Uh, we have the two buttons up the front. Uh, there's no room for USB ports at the front this time around. Um, literally can't fit them in. Um, the sides are blank, but around the back we have mini HDMI and two micro USB ports. One for peripherals and one for the power. A big chunky vent here and on the bottom, and that's because it's quite cramped inside. And this, this, I've seen C, CPU temperatures of 65 degrees in this unit, so I wouldn't recommend printing the case in PLA if you can have a go yourself. Now it clicks together in the same way as my other case, but this time all of the electronics are held in the bottom shell. So the switches there, the Arduino, the NFC reader and the Raspberry Pi itself is underneath it all uses the same latch mechanism as in my other case, but because I'm restricted in height, I've had to move it off to the side. And the cartridge tray has a, a little arm that engages with the latch there. So I'll hook it up now and show you it working. Now with the, the Pi Zero, I like to use a micro USB uh, hub, so it has three USBs and a Ethernet port. Uh, it's quite handy just to connect things to the Zero. So that goes in there. And then we hold down the button to start the boot process. Now it is noticeably uh, lacking in performance compared to the other Raspberry Pi boards. Um, and that's just because it it does lack a little bit of CPU power, so you'll notice the boot takes a little bit longer, and also some of the emulators aren't playable, which is a shame, but NES games work great, and most Super Nintendo games work really well as well, so you do notice it is a bit limited compared to the Raspberry Pi 3, but it works quite well. And yeah, here we are, sort of just booting into emulation station. Okay, cool. Right, I'll use my uh, Wii U Pro controller that's hooked up with Bluetooth so I can choose a game from the list if I want to. Or I could use the mini, mini uh, uh cartridges. <laughs> Here they are. So these are 30% of the size of the original cartridges. And that's the same scale as the case, so it's 30% scale as opposed to 40% of my other system. And I'll show you a comparison. There. So we have the original cart, the 40% scale, and the, the little tiny 30% scale. And they work in the same way. So we lift the lid, uh, cartridge just slots in, clicks down, and then when you 
press the power button, the game starts to boot. It's not as snappy as the other system, it takes a couple of seconds, but we do get there. And there we are. Let's see. That's enough of that. Okay, that's about it for this quick video. Keep an eye out for updates on the electronics kits coming soon. If you have any comments or suggestions, let me know down below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon.